fellow dwarf, take a look through our supplies, study our lore and get to know each one of our tools. Learn how to play our instruments and sing our songs, for we shall need all of these skills in order to survive the difficult winter that's coming. Let me show you how. Today we are very excited because we have the chance to show you how to play one of the recent games coming out from Vesuvius Media, which is Dwarf Sevens Winter. This is a brand new game right out of Kickstarter, also hitting the stores on retail. So uh, let me show you how the game plays, what it is about and tell us our opinion at the end of the video. So the dwarf at the tavern told me yesterday that winter is upon us. We made our preparations, our walls are thick and their foundation run deep. But they are useless without hero dwarves to defend them against the monsters that come in. This battle won't be easy, but we must survive and we must sing our song and endure. So as you can see in front of you, I have set up the board and let me guide you through what you need to do to set up the game and get you started. It's very easy, it's very fast and you can in a couple of minutes be right away, get on your way playing the game. So what you do first of all is you take the monsters, you shuffle the monster cards and place the monster deck and miniatures within easy reach of all players. This is the monster deck, it has this bluish, let me show you one card up close. This is the back of the monster card. And this is the anatomy of the monster card. You shuffle this deck here, there is a designated spot next to the board and you open a number of monster cards so, uh, depending on the number of players. For a four player game that we are showing today we are going to open three to four uh, monsters. So the next thing we do is we place the board within easy reach of everyone and we shuffle the hero deck. The hero deck let me show you, it's on the top of the board, it has this back. This is how a hero card looks like. There are four slots, two dollars, two dollars, one dollar and one dollar. So we shuffle the deck here, we put it face up, so we have one, two, three, four open cards um, consisting of the hero market from where we can shop and get more hero cards. Then we prepare the disaster deck. This is a disaster deck on the right of the game board. This is the back of the disaster card. Uh, they have different illustrations depending on the kind of disaster. It could be from, uh, you know, Vesuvius, from Vesuvius Media, that is great idea. Erupting or um, a pirate king uh, dwarf stealing resources or whatever. So what you do is, depending on the number of players, you will open uh, a specific amount of uh, cards. With four players we open two and we put it on the right of the game board as shown here. Next let me show you the player boards. Each player will take a player board which consists of all these things here. So what you have in briefly is you have four markers for the four resources of the game. You have wood, stone, food and gold. So you put each of those on the starting area which is highlighted with white, with a white border as you can see. You have two scrolls, one is for the number of actions you have, it starts at number 5 and there is a track going down to 3 and the hand limit for your heroes for the other scroll, the other track, so it starts at number 7. You have this fantastic beautiful minis we have made a different uh, unboxing video where you can see the nice detail on each of uh, this miniature. Amazing detail. Very good size, thick and detailed. Really like the, the detail. Every single dwarf is different. Unique, funny and with a character. Really liked it. Just to show you all of them quickly. So each player starts with uh, seven minis. Be careful because this is the expansion, you have plus three which have uh, this uh, base which is different. The circular round base is different. So you take the seven ones with a circular base and you put it on the seven slots on your player board. We'll come back with the details about the expansion. And the last thing you take is this uh, 
token, youth music token, which you will use to play music, plus your basic starting hero cards. So your basic, basic uh, starting hero cards, you start with a seven. Let me show you quickly the deck. Each of those, it can be differentiated from the other player from the color of the ribbon. So the red player has all these ones with red ribbon beneath the star. This is from the blue player, for example. So you get all those seven, which are the starting hero cards, which you can always say, uh, you know, you, you'll compile this and make a deck better with better options and better heroes once you purchase them from uh, the market. But in any case, you will be able, when you select it before uh, you play, to select a number of uh, those depending on your hand limit and go to, to take a round. Another thing to denote is that the starting heroes have a value of zero here, so they don't give any victory points. But you can see, for example, the ones that you will acquire down the road, they give also victory points at the end of the game if you have them in your deck. So uh, the cartoonish uh, art is fantastic. We'll come back uh, to our opinion about the production and the looks of the game. But the anatomy of the card is, uh, here is the, um, the, um, the graphics, here is the, um, the amount of victory points you'll get at the end of the game, and here's the ability of your hero card. It's very easy to, to follow. So let me briefly show you how um, each player's personal board and setup looks like. These are the seven cards you can see here. The dwarves, the minis are placed on the slots. The resources are set up. And this is a starting player token, uh, which goes to the youngest player. We also prepare the defenders in clockwise order from the first player. Every player gets to put one dwarf on any zone of the game board. Then the second player places a second uh, one more dwarf. And the third and fourth player place in order two of the dwarves on any zones on the game board. So let's say here we have the yellow player who is the starting player. He places one of his dwarves. Then the second player can place uh, one of his dwarves. And then the third player place their dwarves, two dwarves, and the fourth player, two dwarves as well. So the last thing we do is we adjust the winter track. We place the winter token on the spot with the number one, as shown here, which indicates that we're at the beginning of uh, the first week out of the seven that the game lasts. It lasts seven rounds. Each round depicts uh, a week. So we're ready to start the game. So in the game, we have five different zone types on the game board. We can quickly differentiate them by the icon that they have next to each of the zone. There is an icon. So the icons in general depict forests with this green icon here. We also have mines like this one. We have fields which have this purple marker with the house icon. We have the castle that you can see there's only one zone. The castle sits at the middle of the game board with this icon. And the last thing is we have the wall, which runs around our city and has this icon with a double axe. So each zone on the game board, except the castle, bears an icon indicating its type and the number. These unique combinations of numbers and icons are used to indicate specific zones, referred to various cards. For example, when monsters enter the game, they will enter on specific zones depicting uh, the icon of the zone and the number, so you can know that a monster with this icon will come right here, for example, because it's noted on its card when it enters the game. And unless otherwise stated, dwarves can be placed on and moved on any zone on the game board. You can have different uh, minis on each zone, also different players occupying the same zone. And they can, you can also have a different amounts of uh, monsters. You can have a monster in a zone with heroes. You can have disaster tokens as well. Unless otherwise stated, you can have all different combinations. So let's see the game overview. The winter is harsh and the ice is building up. The dwarves will need to battle both terrifying creatures, all the monsters that they want to break in the castle, and defeat also the elements and the disasters that they are running down the city of the dwarves. But while each clan wants to earn the most victory points, the only way to survive the harsh winter is for them to work together, otherwise everyone is doomed. A game of Door 7 winter lasts around 7 rounds, exactly 7 rounds actually, which are called weeks. Each week is divided into 4 phases, the same 4 phases, and at the end of the 7th week, 
if you manage to survive that long that is, a final scoring takes place and the winner is determined. So it's very easy, each of the seven weeks has the same four phases that run like this. The first is phase one, where we have the enemy invasion, we can come back with details on this. Then we have phase two, which is the preparation, followed by phase three, which are the actions that the players take, and the last is phase four, which is the resolution. So let's start by phase one, the enemy invasion. Within this phase, the first thing that happens is we refresh the tracks. All players reset their hand size to seven, it could be lower depending on your status, and their actions to five by moving the depicting scroll tokens higher up the track. They also retrieve their mu music token, which is this one, if they have used it to play music, which uh, they will do for sure, then they retrieve it and get it back to be ready for the next round. So the next thing that happens in phase one, it's the monster's attack. The first player decides the order in which monsters move, they choose a monster, move it one zone closer to the castle, and then activate its ability. After its ability has been resolved and all effects applied, they choose the next monster and repeat the same step until all monsters on the game board have taken their uh, turn, moved and resolved their abilities as applicable. For example, this monster here, which has this corresponding card here, moves one spot, one zone closer towards the castle, which is his destination, and then his ability is applied. His ability, we're well, going to come back on the abilities of the monsters, says that the green player will have to move down his actions one, moving this scroll down one, uh, one point towards uh, the bottom of his track. So instead of five actions, he's going to have four actions when his uh, turn comes up. Everything happens similarly, so the player then selects the different monster to move that it's on the table, on the game board, to move towards uh, the center of the game board, the castle, apply its uh, action as applicable until all monsters or board had, uh, their, um, have been moved and their actions have been applied as mentioned before. Keep in mind that to resolve the monster's ability, you apply its effect to all affected players. For example, if the, the, the monster was moving in this area, like that, so his ability will be applied to both the yellow and the green player. But keep in mind that if the green player had, for example, two dwarves in this zone, when the monster moved in, this is not accumulative, one effect is go uh, the effect once is going to be applied on the yellow and the effect is going to be applied once on the green, not twice because he has two minutes there. So it is um, understood that once the effect is applied only once per player in the zone that the monster moves in. So a little bit about the monster's ability, we have a variety of abilities that uh, they are uh, depicted on the icons which come in the manual and they are on the card of its uh, corresponding monster. So in general keep in mind that an, an, an area, a zone, cannot produce resources of any kind if it's occupied by the monster. So besides the devastating effect of ongoing of the monster, depending on the icon what they do, where they are located they block this zone and the dwarves cannot produce resources from this zone which is quite bad because you need resources to do most of the things in this game. So quickly go through the icons of, um, of the monsters. This icon here means that if you have dwarves in this zone or adjacent to it you lose one action like we've seen in the example before. This icon means that you choose one other monster and you move it on so it's like a snowball effect. This icon means that if you have dwarves in the zone or adjacent to it then you reduce the other track, the hand size by one. Minus one wood means that if you have dwarves in its zone or adjacent, you lose one wood. It could be a different resource, so you can have different uh, resources with the same ability. This means that each player returns one dwarf from their master zone to their player board. One dwarf mini is um, eliminated and goes uh, back to the player's reserve to be able to come in back later. This means that when respawned, Immediately you reveal one extra disaster, so this is only happens once when uh, it's, uh, the, card, the master card is revealed. This means that if you have dwarves in, its, in, uh, in the zone or adjacent to this one, you lose one food. You cannot 
play the instrument that corresponds to this current zone because it has um, the, the forbidden banner here and this wraps about everything all the abilities of the monsters are included from the base core game are included in this schematic next thing in phase one is the monster reinforcements after moving all monsters on the game board we spawn new monsters if required based on the number of players at the end of this phase you should have a number of monsters that in the game board on the slot with uh, the cards that matches uh, the number shown uh, on the side of the game board so with one player uh, we have two monsters you can see the icon here so you have one two slots with three players with two players we have three monsters those three slots occupied and with three or four players you have all four slots occupied so for example let's say we're playing a four player game one of the monsters has been uh, eliminated or whatever so it was a time to spawn new monsters the monsters get reinforcements so what we do to spawn a monster the first player draws the top card from the monster deck which is here you place it on the um, depending on the number of players because we need to fill in this slot because we were playing with four players we place it uh, on the corresponding slot and what we do is we take we read obviously the card to see that this a uh, monster is going to be spawned on the walls section number two it's here so it we take the respective mini which is very nice actually give me a chance to show you up close the fantastic minis of the game so they go to the spawning point so they're going to enter the board from there the subsequent rounds and move towards the center and towards the castle some monsters, like the Orc King, have the ability that activates immediately when they're spawned. We've seen before from the icons that a new disaster uh, comes in when the Orc King uh, comes into the game. Other than that, the same uh, principles that we've seen before apply. The last thing in phase one is we reveal a disaster. The first player draws the top card from the disaster deck and places it face up on the free spot next to the game board. Then you place a disaster token on the game board as indicated on the spawn zone of the card. For example, we take this card here. It shows that this disaster will be on this zone, the forest 4. We place it on the, num on the spot here so it takes the corresponding spot. Keep in mind the number of players and the number of disasters that it starts with uh, when you set up the game. And you take one disaster token, which is this one, and you place it on the 4 forest, which is this one here and now the disaster this disaster is occurring here again keep in mind that disasters do not move they remain in the zone until a uh, player has required the number of dwarves present and spends the resources needed on the card to overcome it until a disaster has been overcome and its token removed you cannot again similarly like the, uh, the monsters produce resources in that zone there are only abilities that produce uh, only pr abilities that produce are affected by disasters Keep in mind that at the end of any week, within the middle of the game, when there are four more disasters active, you will immediately lose the game. So keep in mind that here is a slot with uh, uh, the last slot, uh, the fourth, um, the, the last slot has actually um, uh, a crossbone. So if this is still valid, all these disasters are there and the players do not take uh, care of them during the week, everyone loses the game. Uh, one last thing to denote is the anatomy of the card of the disaster. Here is the spawning uh, zone. Here are the amount of doors needed in the zone where the token is in order to overcome it. Here are the resources that the player needs to expend from his tracks, moving them down for food and two stone in order to get uh, to be able to defeat, uh, overcome the actually the disaster. And last but not least here four and two last but not least we have the victory points because when you if you are the one that overcomes this disaster you take it face down and these are the points points you're going to score uh, at the end of the game and this is a gold you um, immediately gain uh, at this point to use it uh, later on but the points will be awarded at the end of the game because you're going to have a pile of disasters that you uh, avoided during your turn and monsters that you killed we're gonna have uh, we're gonna see the sum of the score scoring at the end of uh, the video 
So let's move to phase two, which is the preparation. During the preparation phase, players will prepare a hand of heroes from their action deck. You take the whole action deck, you can have more than seven because during the game you're going to acquire more heroes in order to be able to be more efficient during your round. So from that, that deck that you have uh, uh, older heroes collected, the new ones plus the starting ones, you're going to select a number of heroes to take down with you uh, from depending on the number that you have here. So if it, I am at seven, I will pick up seven cards from my deck. If I'm lower, I will need to pick up lower because a monster has made me to reduce my hand limit uh, in the previous uh, phase. So here we have seven, so we can take all seven startup uh, heroes that we want to, to include. And keep in mind that you choose the number of cards depending on uh, the slot that we've seen before, but you'll need to be able to play cards during your um, next uh, phase and do perform, um, uh, uh, perform your actions. But the selection of cards you take with you is very important because you'll see in the next uh, step that when you play music, you have uh, this amount of um, this um, abilities activated on your turn, but you are able to follow um, other players when they play a different uh, instrument, and we'll come back to this great mechanic of the game and play additional cards and do perform additional uh, actions and benefit from them. So the juice of the game for the week comes in phase 3, where we take our actions. The action track on the game board indicates the number of actions you can take during the action phase. Any combination of actions can be used, you can do whatever you want, up to the number that you are allowed to depending on your track. You can place a dwarf, move a dwarf, acquire a hero or play a musical instrument. You may also defeat a monster or overcome a disaster as free actions. For those two, you don't have to pay action points, provided that you have the required number of dwarves and resources and you're located on the specific uh, um, zone. So let's see the different individual actions that you can do during your turn. By spending one action point, you place one dwarf from your personal board and you take it and you put it wherever you want in the zone during um, uh, on the game board so i can take it and put it here for one action point keep in mind that i cannot perform this action multiple times i can perform this action multiple times during my turn but i cannot spawn a second dwarf in the same zone like i did before it needs to be a different one for example this one this one or that one it's up to me another action we can do is you can spend one action point and move one of your dwarves on the game board to any adjacent zone you may perform this action multiple times during your turn as long as you have actions to pay for it so i can spend one action point and move this guy here another option i have during my turn is to acquire a hero in order to acquire a hero card from the hero pool you must spend one action point and pay the corresponding cost in gold as indicated on the game board you see we have four slots as we discussed at the, during the beginning of the game during setup so if i want say this guy here i'm going to spend for one action point pay two dollars plus uh, i'm going to take the card in my hand put it on my deck with the rest of my, my hero cards and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to slide those this guy to become cheaper so this is the direction that the cards are sliding towards the cheaper one dollar spots and uh, I'm going to have always four hero cards open in the hero pool. A quick word about the anatomy of the hero card again. We have, as we mentioned before, on the top the amount of victory points earned at the end of the game for the heroes that I bought and used uh, during the game. I don't lose them, uh, so I, this is a secure victory point I, I take. And here is a hero's ability that is depicted at the bottom of the hero card. The last thing I can do as an action, by spending action points, is I can spend obviously an action point and play a musical instrument that has not been played um, in this week. So, for example, let's say that this musical instrument has already been played and we have already an icon on this slot, so I cannot play this musical instrument. So what I can do is I can spend one action point moving down uh, the corresponding track uh, on my game board, on my player a personal game board and then I can place a music token on top of my chosen musical instrument from the music hall so I can put it on any of those three because this is already taken and for example let's say I decide to play the drums 
you may now immediately resolve any number of cards from your hand. Remember, we have the hand limit that we selected our hero cards and we use them for this week. So you can select any number of cards from your hand that match the chosen instrument. And you do not have to play all of them. Uh, obviously, it's up to you, it's up to your strategy, but I don't see any reason not to, to use most of the abilities to your benefit and perform their abilities. Once you have finished playing your cards, each other player, in clockwise order, may choose to play any number of cards from their hand that match your chosen instrument. So the rest of the players, in clockwise order, they also follow with this specific instrument that you chose and they select the corresponding hero cards that they depict this music instrument and also perform their actions uh, as they see fit. Let me show you, for example, from my starting hand I have these cards, so when I selected the drums, that means that I cannot play these cards. I cannot, sorry, I cannot play these cards that depict different instruments. I can only play those two cards, meaning that I can apply both effects if I wish for my drawers on my game board. So let's say, for example, I played, I chose the drums, obviously, and I decided to play this card from my hand. That means that the zones which have the forest icon and where I have located um, uh, my uh, yellow drawers, minis, they will produce resources, wood resources for me. Let's see, for example, here we have yellow dwarf here on this forest, on this forest and on that forest. What happens is when I play this card, each of those in theory would produce one wood for me. But this zone is fine, it will produce one wood. This zone is fine, it will produce one wood. This zone here will not produce a zone for me, regardless of the fact that I have a yellow dwarf there, because as you remember, when you have a disaster icon, you do not produce resources in this region. If I also had, so I would get only one wood for this and one wood for that. If there was also a master in one of the zones that they are affected by the ability, neither this zone would produce the corresponding uh, wood. So I wouldn't get a, a wood for this one, I wouldn't get a wood for that one, I would only get a wood for this one. So you need obviously to make sure that you eliminate uh, masters and you take care of disasters because they block your production of resources. After I have uh, resolved uh, this card, I can decide to play another card as long as I have the drums icon on it. So I can also activate this card which allows me to move um, one mini, one dwarf, from a zone which has the forest towards an adjacent zone. So I could also take this mini and move it to adjacent zone, say here. So I'm ganging up to try to dissolve, uh, resolve the disaster. I could also do it from this one because this is also located on a forest and I can also move this guy here. With this icon you can also move um, other players dwarves so you can position them good uh, for the next turn as well or make them uh, you know have something default situation so you move them out but keep in mind that you need to collaborate most of the cases in the game in order to be able to make the best out of um, defeating monsters and resolving after I have resolved my turn each other player in clockwise order order gets a chance to play any hero cards which depict the drum instrument, musical instrument, so they can play the same music like me and apply their effects as well. So, if uh, the red player here had uh, a, re a forest production card, say for example he had this card too, he wouldn't be able to produce similarly due to the disaster, but the green player and uh, the blue player would be able to produce for themselves one wood respectively here. And the same goes for this region. The red and uh, the green player would also get to produce one wood. But they need to play the corresponding card from their hand to be able to follow suit. I'm not going to go into all the details of the hero abilities, there are quite a few, but they're very easy to follow, so the iconography is fantastic, easy. Uh, just to, to name a few to show you some uh, idea of what's going on, for example with this hero ability you can produce one food per field you occupy, like the four we've seen before. For this ability here, it says you gain one food, one stone and one wood immediately. For this one, it says you pay two gold to acquire any card from the hero pool. And for this one, 
it says that place or move up to two of your um, different words so you get to add more so there are a lot of uh, here abilities the rulebook has all the information on all of those just to show you that there are quite a few because you also get some on the back of the page so it's quite good because you have all these potential abilities that you can uh, you know use depending on the heroes you acquire from the hero pool and the combination of those having a musical instrument always to follow uh, when you select the seven if you have seven hand limits from your hand makes a major part portion of the game and your strategy so as a free action you can defeat a monster on your turn if you occupy the same zone as a monster and you have the required number of dwarves and resources as depicted on the monster card you may be able to defeat it you return the dwarves used to defeat the monster to your player board you take them out of the main board and you adjust the resource tracks accordingly and remove the defeated monster miniature from the game board finally you place the defeated monster card face down near your player board because you will count towards your total vp points at the end of the game for example this is the vicious monster that you see here so it needs five dwarves uh, present on the zone where it's occupying to be defeated and to be able to discard one food and one stone it will give you four victory points at the end of the game so i have my five dwarves next to it, next to the monster i expend one food and one stone and i defeat this monster i take it out of the board i take the corresponding card and flip it on my collection to get to remember to get four victory points at the end of the game and i take i adjust the resource tracks uh, track uh, tracks respectively and i take these minis out and put them back on my main board because they have fought bravely the master and defeated it another free action i can do on my turn is overcome a disaster on my turn if i occupy the same zone as a disaster token you see it here remember it also has a corresponding card that matches the disaster that you can see here so if I'm at this zone and I have the required number of dwarves and resources, I may overcome it. I return the dwarves used to overcome the disaster to my player board, similarly the same way like we did with masters. I adjust my resource tracks, expanding the depicted uh, resources needed. And then I claim the, the, the gold reward and remove the corresponding disaster token from the game board. Finally, I take the card and put it face down in front of me because also it will give me victory points at the end of the game. For example, this disaster requires two dwarves present and you need to expend four resources and two stone once i do that i will remove the two dwarves from the game board remove the disaster token take this card which face down will go near my player board and will give me three victory points at the end of the game and instantly i get to win two gold then i adjust my resource track on the game board and the personal player board respectively the last upkeep phase is very easy, is the, the resolution. If at the end of the week you have four disasters active or a monster inside your castle, then you lose the game. Be careful not to let, th let those monsters reach your center of the game board, the, your castle, because you will lose at the end of the week if you haven't defeated, or if you have four disasters occupying your disaster slot next to the game board. If it is not the seventh week and you are still alive, good for you, then you move the winter token one spot to the right on the track and pass the first player token to the next player clockwise. So we'll go to live another week and go to week number five. If this is the end of the seventh week, so if you manage to survive seven weeks and you manage not to lose the castle to masters or be overwhelmed by disasters, then you survive the winter. Great for you. You are a brave war dwarf and your sacrifices are well noted. At the first signs of spring, you will be celebrating your victory. You should count your victory points and determine the winner. So let's see how we calculate the score. At the end of the game, the player with the most victory points will win the game. You score victory points according to the following. You reveal all defeated monsters from your next to your player board and you sum the amount of uh, victory points, for example, like that or you sum all the victory points from the masters you have defeated that's the first part then you reveal all the overwhelmed disasters that you managed to uh, the disasters sorry that you managed to overcome they look like that and you sum all the amount of victory points from the disasters you managed to save uh, the city from the next thing is all your acquired heroes 
Remember that your uh, starting heroes give you zero points, like that. But when you get to acquire more heroes, each of those from the hero pool give you additional victory points. So you sum up all the victory points from the heroes and you add it to all the previous uh, victory points you have so far. The last thing that you do is you check your uh, resources. Let me show you on the game board of the red player. If any of your resources manage to reach the end, so you have at the end of the game seven, for example, food, wood, stone or coin, then you get to win three, two, two and two victory points respectively. You see the star at the end of the track. Everything is summed up, totaled and the player with the most victory points gets to win the game. If you have a tie, a tie uh, is resolved given to the player with the most dwarves on the, on the player board because another thing that you also, somebody I didn't mention is if you're lucky enough to have all your uh, dwarves, here I have two, but if I had all seven back on my game board at the end of the game, I scored uh, additionally three victory points. So if not, that, that's not the case and uh, we have different, uh, we have a tie and the players have different amount of um, dwarves back on their uh, player board, then the player that has the most victory points from hero cards wins. Just to mention that the game comes with a, a solo mode, which is very welcome, and also you have two more variants, the Nightmare variant, where you can have different, uh, more difficult uh, uh, session if you, for example, at rounds 3, 5 and 7 spawn two disasters instead, reveal two disasters instead of one, so it makes it much, much more difficult with uh, the disasters coming in. Or you can have a bloodlust variation where you're looking to get more uh, monsters killed because for each different type of monster you defeat at the end of the game you will end one more victory point. There is also the legendary expansion that adds more variety to the game. All the cards that they come with the legendary expansion have this icon here, so you can differentiate them from the rest of the cards. These are the monsters. So um, they have, you have different abilities for these new monsters, but uh, one of the most important things, you also have one more um, uh, hero that has this special ability, but the most uh, interesting part are the three additional minis that you get with different abilities. So you have, remember, non, the non-round base uh, minis, are these guys here, three more per player so the, these are these that you can see at the back of the rule book and they have different abilities for example the ice dwarf which is this vicious little guy here so the ice dwarf it counts for two dwarves for the purpose of defending and uh, defeating monsters so you can really take a good use of him when you want to attack a monsters it's really good because he counts for two instead of one this is the guy with uh, the axe here. Then you have the Earth Guardian, which is this guy here. Very nice mini. Remember the base is different. So this guy, if your Guardian is on a disaster zone, you pay one less resource in order to overcome it. Very useful for uh, disasters. And the last guy is the Thunder King, which is this cool mini here. Look how good this looks. With the crown the sword. The Thunder King, when you place uh, placing your king on the game board from your player board is a free action and doesn't count from your uh, action, you don't spend action points to perform it. Very interesting cool things that the expansion adds and uh, gives more variety and more things and more strategies to follow. So there you have it, this is a how to play video on the how to play instructions of uh, Dwarf 7's Winter. This is a very uh, fun and interesting game that uh, brings, first of all, has an amazing uh, production, which is very nice. And the next thing that I need uh, to, to let you know is that it plays very, very uh, smooth as well. It is, the rules are very, very easy, but it has some unique elements. First of all, the aspect of uh, you know, collecting the specific heroes, not only for the points, but also for their additional abilities. And there are a lot of abilities of the heroes. So they play the instrument uh, portion mechanic of the game where you follow and you can always do something more on your turn plus you can follow the instrument of other players and perform you know uh, different things so you need to very carefully select your uh, hand limit uh, dwarves that you'll uh, take with you each week because they'll give you your, they'll, they will open up possibilities for you in an excellent way 
Uh, the monsters are very tricky. You need to follow them very quickly and very thoroughly because uh, you know they have different abilities. They may, uh, you know, create uh, troubles for you in the areas that they are and sometimes in the adjacent areas. So the most important thing is they block the resource production of this area. So you need resources in this game to perform everything. So you need to take care of them fast. Also, if they reach the city center, the castle, then you die. So it's a bit tricky because everyone is for his own, but you need to collaborate to avoid uh, losing the game. Very interesting uh, concept. The same goes with the disasters. It's very unique. So in general, I'm very, very impressed with the game. I highly recommend it. I had a, a very ex excellent time and had a blast playing the game. I really enjoyed it. It's cool for, uh, you know, uh, new players in the, in, in the genre and new players coming to the hobby, but also for experienced gamers. Uh, I really, really enjoyed with uh, all the sessions I played so far. I believe that it's a, it's a good value for money, good package overall, production-wise and mechanic-wise, and the gameplay is very smooth. I'm going to keep this in my collection. I'm very happy to own this, uh, this copy, and I'm going to get a lot of plays out of it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You can see that I'm excited about the game. It makes sense. I really had a good uh, time and, and a blast playing, playing it, and I enjoyed it pretty well. So, uh, uh, two thumbs up from me for Dwarf 7 Winter. Hope you enjoyed this video. Many thanks for watching.